Do you work with DynamoDB and want to get a deeper understanding of how it works? In this video, we're going to be starting our deep dive series into DynamoDB and we're going to be starting with how DynamoDB works and we're looking into partitions. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. In this video, we're going to be looking at DynamoDB, how it works, and then going into the partitions that are part of every DynamoDB table. Before we jump into the video, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has liked, subscribed, and commented on any of my videos as we've just reached a massive milestone. We've just hit 2,000 subscribers. It's been a lot of work, but it's really great to see that my videos are helping you guys. I've had loads of comments from people saying that one of the videos has helped them solve a problem they were really fighting with, through to one guy who said he'd watched through all of my series and actually got a promotion because of it. It's amazing to see how these videos can really help you guys out. And for the next goal, I want to hit 5,000 subscribers. So if you haven't done already, please subscribe down in the bottom corner and help me reach this next goal to help more of you guys become really top-notch developers. To start off, we're gonna start quite high level and DynamoDB is a NoSQL database that is hosted and managed by AWS and is completely serverless. Amazon take care of everything from the scaling and the resourcing, so you just need to provision those. The way that AWS works behind the scenes is it uses SSDs to store all of your data in their data centers. And that brings us on nicely to the next point, which is partitions. So when you create a DynamoDB table, you have the option to create a partition key and then also a sort key if you would want. The way that partitions work are each partition key value is grouped together. The way this might work is you might have a table for movies and inside that it's going to have a partition key of actor and then a sort key of movie title. And in this case, every single time that you add a movie to an existing partition key, so example, if you had three movies with the same actor, they would all be grouped together. And that single partition needs to live on a single SSD. This is really important as we need to make sure that our partition key has a high cardinality, which means that the number of items grouped together doesn't get extremely large. One example of where you could do this and not have high cardinality would be if you had a database of pets and you set the partition key to be animal. In this case, what would happen is you would have a lot of records under dog and cat, which would mean that that partition is very, very large. This has issues because all of that data lives on a single SSD. And therefore, if you're querying that data, all of those requests are hitting that same partition. Having all of these requests hitting a single partition can actually cause the requests to be throttled because at the moment there is a limit of 3,000 reads or 1,000 writes a second to any of our partitions. If we were going to redesign this table in a way that was more efficient, we might change the partition key and instead of it being a just animal, 
so dogs or cats, we might change it to be breed. And this means you're going to have much smaller partitions, which can be spread across and balanced across the different SSDs, which means that you then aren't going to get that throughput limit. So your requests are much less likely to get throttled. In terms of resourcing your partitions, the way that this happens is that you have assigned a read and write capacity when you set up your DynamoDB table, if you're using provisioned capacity. And with this, say you have four major partitions, it will split the reserved capacity between those four. For example, if you had 40 reserved capacity for reading, it would give 10 to each of your four partitions. Even if your partitions are getting hit with less reads, so say they're all getting hit with 10, that's fine. But as the requests increase, for example, if you have a hot partition, which is one partition that is getting hit a lot more, then as you increase that beyond the capacity assigned to that one partition, we, it will automatically reassign the provisioned capacity to that up to the point where your total used capacity is at the limit. This is really useful because that allows instantaneous scaling for each of your partitions. And then the only real thing you've got to think about is the absolute limits, which are 3000 read capacity units and 1000 write capacity units a second, which are hard limits for each partition. When you've got lots and lots of different partitions, what Amazon does very smartly is it balances those into the partition groups. So if you've got a partition which only has one or two records, that can go on the same SSD as another partition that has one or two records. And it will try and balance the number of partitions and the total number of data points for each of your SSDs that your DynamoDB table is spread across. You don't need to think about balancing it. So the only thing we need to think about is making sure that we have our partitions relatively small so that AWS can balance them well. In this video, we have looked at AWS, how it works behind the scenes with SSDs, and how then partitions are used to spread your data to make it more accessible and improve performance. We've learned that we want to keep our partitions nice and small, which allows Amazon to make the most use of the technology behind the scenes and result in our best performance possible. We've also learned that if we have one partition that is getting hit a lot more than other ones, it has a hard limit of 3000 read capacity units and 1000 write capacity units per second. And that is a hard limit that we cannot exceed, which is another reason to keep the number of records in each of your partitions as low as possible. If you've learned something new in this video, please help me out by giving it a like as it helps the YouTube algorithm suggest this video to more developers just like yourselves. And if you haven't done already, make sure to subscribe down here and turn on the bell notification so you get notified the next time I deploy a new video on serverless and AWS.